Welcome to Layer of the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. On today's episode, another in my series of In Defense Of. This is where we take an album that uh, some of the fans are divided on, some of the fans don't care for it. Even the band themselves sort of talks down on it. So the album that we're going to be coming to the defense of today is Black Sabbath and their album Never Say Die. So joining me for this today, I invited some special guests and we have joining us here is John. John is the guitar player for Incantation. We have Steve. Steve has the YouTube channel Rock Fantasy Files. He's been kind enough to have me as a guest on his channel a few times, always a great time. And we have Darren. Darren is no stranger to the lair. He's been here a bunch of times and Darren and I have a Black Sabbath podcast titled Into the Void, a Black Sabbath podcast. And our latest episode just so happens to be on Never Say Die. So if you want to hear Darren and I going on at great lengths about Never Say Die, you can check out the podcast. All right, so uh, let's set the table for this. Uh, Black Sabbath, uh, they're coming off of the Never uh, Technical Ecstasy Tour. Ozzy leaves the band for a little while. They get uh, Dave Walker from Savoy Brown is briefly in the band. Ozzy comes back. Uh, the band is recording in Toronto. Everybody's miserable because they have to rehearse and try to rewrite the songs during the day in a freezing cold theater and then record at night. It's the uh, worst selling, up to that point, it was the worst selling Black Sabbath album. It would be the last album for Ozzy from this, uh, from this era, from the original era. And in the band themselves even would sort of uh, divorce themselves from this record over time, not having very fond memories of it. But uh, John, tell us why you like come to the defense of Never Say Die by Black Sabbath. Well, I, I just think it's a, it just has a lot of feeling on that album. It just like a somber vibe to it. It's just, it's like, you know, it's the end of something, something really great. And it's like, for me being such a huge Iomi fan, I mean, I'm a fan of all of them, but Iomi, especially as a guitar player, just to hear, hear his riffing on here and hearing his personality on the songs it just even though they're not the heaviest songs i mean i don't think there's really anything on here that you know you can compare to the heaviness of i don't know we'll say the first six black sabbath albums i heard that on your show you're bitching about that which i, I bitch about that too that's the lamest thing ever if you like just the first six black sabbath fans you're barely a black sabbath fan because you're only touching the surface on that that's so poser yeah. it's unbelievable <laughs> but <laughs> but anyway um you know no i i just i think it's a, a it's a great album it was one when i first heard it i, I it didn't really I didn't really get it. You know, it, it took a long time of being a Sabbath fan to really, really get the album properly. It was, it probably wasn't until maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago where I really started to like appreciate how amazing this album it is. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that when I listened to the first, especially the first, like, three, four Black Sabbath albums. Holy crap, I played those so many damn times. I could sing those songs in my sleep. I mean, watching them play live and playing War Pigs and, and Paranoid makes me want to vomit that, you know, hearing those songs over, you know. I mean, I, they're great songs, but you don't need to hear these damn songs. They have so many great songs in their discography. It's like mix the damn, you know, mix it up a little bit. Get, toss somebody a treat, you know? So, um, you know, for me, this album was just a great, I mean, for me, it's great to hear Tony, Tony Iommi and, and, and everyone else. Bill Ward's performance is great on it. Um, Geezer Butler has some really cool, um, you know, playing on here. Ozzy sounds great on a lot of songs. Even the Bill Ward song vocally sounds great to me. I just think it's a I think it's a, a great ending. You, you hear that the band is in turmoil. You hear that. And that's so amazing as a musician for myself to be able to listen to an album and hear the destruction of that lineup in that album. To me, that means so much as being a Black Sabbath fan. I mean, it's like 
you know, okay, there was some terrible black, I mean, one terrible Black Sabbath album, Forbidden, which I just can't, can't ha <laughs> hang with, down. you know, I mean, I'm sorry, but that one just kind of, that's a tough, that's a tough one to swallow. Yeah. Yeah. And I, that, that was like a fail, yeah. a, 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 a bad ending, but this, yeah. this album to me was kind of like watching uh, a train wreck of your favorite musicians all in one album and to me that's a you know it's it's a great thing especially being such a huge fan i mean i i mean i've listened to probably all of black sabbath albums so many freaking times you know i just, I just know i don't even have to listen to them anymore i just know them they're just part like i just could play the albums in my brain you know my head or whatever mm -hmm. So it's like, but the, you know, once I started like digging into this album a little deeper and really, you know, analyzing it, I mean, I like, I like a lot of those riffs that I always putting in there. They're different a little bit, but they still have like, it just, when he hits like certain notes, it's just like, fuck yeah, dude. Fucking, I want still killing it, even though the band is, you know, on its last legs or whatever. I mean, you could, it's definitely, there's definitely stuff on the album that, okay, maybe I would have left off. I mean, I, you know, Air Dance is a tough one, you know? Okay, I get oh, it, you know? Awesome. And, you know, I took, it's, I mean, it's a good song, but for a Sabbath album, okay, it's not necessarily my favorite, you know, or Breakout. I like it. I think it's a good instrumental. I, it's, it's not maybe what you would expect, but to me, it's still um, reasonable. But I mean, really most of the other songs, um, you know, yeah, most of the other songs I li actually like on the album a lot. I, I think it's good. I really appreciate what you said about how you like the fact that when you listen to it, you're listening to a band falling apart. And you appreciate it from that aspect. I think that's really cool that, that you can appreciate that and get in the moment of that. I, to me, in, in my, my problem with, I know, you know, I'm going to say I, my problem with Never Say Die. It, it, to me, it's, it's the foundation is, is cracked and it runs all the way up. And the band, it, it's, to me, it's kind of bittersweet because I can, whereas you're, and I hope I'm saying this <laughs> in fairness, well, as you're excited by that because it, it shows that, that emotion and that, that reality and as a musician, you can you can appreciate that. For me, as a fan, it's sad. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, I have yeah. such a possessive thing with Black Sabbath. Obviously, John and I do this podcast, and it's a, it's a labor of love. But uh, for me, you know, it, it, it's it's kind of sad to see some of these things that that are that are that are transpiring, and some of it reminds me of things that they did before earlier on earlier records. And it's it's kind of bittersweet. Well, but I, I understand what you're saying with that, but I I like that I like that feeling of uh, I don't know what you call it, like vulnerability or just like the sadness that is in the riffs. Like when I hear those those songs, they sound sad. I mean, mm -hmm. they okay, they're not he as heavy as the other stuff, but there's there, you could tell that there things are like you know they're basically know that this is like the end. Maybe they're trying to maybe do a few things that maybe they weren't a hundred percent excited about doing so much, but they were trying to make a, a hit album or trying to bring themselves kind of back up from the grave. But there's, there's, it's, it's strange, but there's an honesty in there. I mean, maybe from playing in a band and I, I, you know, from playing in a band, I've been in situations where like, the band, you know, a lineup that I'm working with is just dying, you know, and there's something it's terrible to be in the moment, but to look back on that, you're like, wow, something really amazing came out of the fact of, you know, the, the band falling apart or the band dying or just some, there's something about it to me. I mean, I just, I just think it's good. I mean, I, I like the fact that Ozzy on some of the songs, I don't know. He just sounds. <laughs> he, he just there's just a, a sound to his voice. I mean, that there's an emotion to it. That's like 
I don't know. I it, with even with Bill Ward on the stuff that he's singing on there, it's there's an emotion to it that it, it just sounds like you know the end. It's not like when they redid, you know, they came back and they did their last album. This really sounds like a last album. It's it's not. It's, yeah. Yeah. You know, I think the, they knew in their minds that you know this they they were sort of falling apart. And I I see where you're coming from, John, because. My angle on it is, is that I always enjoy seeing bands when they are at this point in their career where things aren't quite going right. There's some inner turmoil. It's, it's kind of like, especially with Black Sabbath, it feels like you're, you're watching your superhero when they're down for the count. You know what I mean? It looks like they're gonna, yes. you know, it's, it's that moment in the movie where the superhero is, yes. you know, he, he's, he's, yeah. they're down and, for the count. And you sort of learn something about who they are by sort yeah. of seeing them in this sort of, you know, this darker moment in their career, you get sort yeah. of this insight into who they are. And yeah, some of it works on, the, some of it doesn't work on the record, some of it does, but it's sort of a fascinating sort of look inside, a peek inside their psyche a little bit, a snapshot of a moment in time where their world is sort of uh, cracking and- cr it's, a, it's, a beautiful, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing though. I'm sorry, um, it's a beautiful thing um, because they like, yeah, like by the time this album's over with, I think everybody could be like, you know, if they really, if they're into it, say as much as me, it's like almost an emotional experience. Like, you know, hearing the band at its last legs, you know, just striving to get something out, you know, trying to make this last thing, you know, as as great as it could be in, in a terrible situation. Cause I, I know the situation was really difficult, but then to have them come around and do an album like Heaven and Hell, where they just totally just come to life again. I mean, it's like the perfect story of like, you know, this band just dies, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, a death. And then they come back to life stronger than ever, you know, with, you know, obviously Ronnie, or James Dio. Dio and yeah. then, but just, just like, you know, they just could, it was like, they just couldn't go on anymore. You even notice that. I mean, I think that's part of the reason why some people, and I know it's not a technical ecstasy, but some people don't like that album because it's starting there, even though it's not, yes. you know, it's like, it just, by, that by the technical ec ecstasy time, even though I love that album, it's a great album too, oh, yeah. but you, you could, those songs are very emotional on that album. I mean, it, it you just feel something in that and that, that is like it's like going down you know they're like they're about to die and then on uh, uh, never say die is actually it should have been called we're dying <laughs> we're dead say die <laughs> we've said yeah. die yeah. but right, that's Steve. to me that's i mean that's a good thing though yeah and uh I'd all right say, Steve, what about you i know you you, you now, were telling us where well, we started I, you I have a history with this that album john said and uh, we're all talking about the struggle of getting this album together and then for some reason you find this unknown band named van halen to <laughs> open up on your tour it probably just didn't help did it you know just having them opening up every night on fire i guess of course on fire is one of their songs but just you know, going out and kicking ass every night and having all these internal struggles already. But anyhow, I grew up with this album. I'm a little older than everybody else in the room here, unfortunately. Well, unfortunately for me, but uh, I can remember the, the little letdown for me when Technoplexity came out, echoing what John said. And I remember buying this, of course, when it came out. And I still liked this album a lot when it came out, even though I knew it wasn't volume four or Paranoid or anything like that. And it holds strong memories. I still listen to this album a lot. And in fact, it's weird because I have the record shop up here and I have girls that work in the shop and employees over the years. And it, and when the girls that are working there now put on a Black Sabbath album, it's weird. They play this. They play <laughs> it's like, I mean, they don't know. Like, the ones I have there are younger kids. They don't know. And I was like, I really like this album. But, uh, I really like this album. I like Never Say Die. I love Johnny Blade. I love that song. I like Junior's Eyes a lot too. You can feel the emotion because we, I found, you know, that that song was supposedly written about Ozzy's dad passing away. So you're talking about the emotion and the sadness in Ozzy's voice. Mm -hmm. His father was dying during this 
but you know, when they were recording this album, I think they had to take time off for him to attend the funeral. So, I mean, maybe that's part of what you hear. I love the song Shockwave. And I, even though John doesn't like it, I really love Air Dance. I don't know what I like about it. It's just really spacey. I think it's a beautiful song. It's just the lyrics about this dancer that's growing old and can't do the dance anymore, can't perform. And has just those memories of being young and being on top of their game. And maybe that's a little bit about Black Sabbath a little bit with this, where I don't know what that song is about. It was actually about an actual person or not. I didn't find that in research, but uh, I still think it's a pretty, it's a, it's a different, it's like a, like Sabbath going jazzy and weird and kind of almost, it is stoner in a way to me too, because you get those like spacey parts in the album, but uh, over to you, I even like to, like I said, Breakout is it's weird, but uh, that's a song that had lyrics, but Ozzy refused to sing them because that's that Dave actually sang songs, so they had to go in and change everything around because Ozzy refused to touch any any lyrics or uh, change the words around. I'm not singing the stuff that I always singer you had in there, so it must have been some heated stuff going on there, uh, in that uh, just struggles going on. Yeah, well, yeah, there probably was. I mean, Ozzy. Ozzy left at the end of 77, um, tried to do his own band, tried to do the Blizzard of Oz with the guys from Necromandis, uh, okay. decided that that wasn't what he wanted to do at that time, or maybe he just felt more comfortable, maybe he wasn't ready, didn't have quite the confidence level yet to, to go out on his own, so he went back to Black Sabbath. And I think somewhere along the way, he probably reconsidered and as he started hearing some of the well i mean you're right they did have to they, they had music written with dave walker ozzy yeah. used to sing it so they had to go in the afternoon and rewrite the music so that yeah. they could record in the evening so i mean they were under a time crunch there was a time restraint there mm -hmm. i think uh yeah I, there's probably a lot of conditions that once Ozzy rejoined, probably decided, hey, man, this probably, this wasn't such a great idea after all. Yeah, and it kind of comes across, and in, in sometimes in his delivery, yeah. you, you can feel that he's not necessarily co connecting with Geezer's lyrics, except Junior's eyes, obviously, he just, he nails that, and that's my favorite song on the album. Okay. And, and I, I think it's because of how everything just comes together so well. Ozzy's voice, the lyrics, you know, it, it, it's one of the more sincere songs on Never Say Die. I think there is sincerity, as John said, in the album as a whole, representing the band at its, during its demise. And if you look at it like that, yeah. you know, it, it, it's pretty profound. Yeah. I think you can appreciate it from, from that perspective. Yes. Song for song, I, I think some songs you know, uh, are better than others. And the ones mm -hmm. that are the best are the ones where you, you feel like the band is all in on it. Even though it might be something different from what they've done before, you know, I'll, I'll back it as long as when I'm listening to it, I get the feeling like the band is into it too. Uh, when you get songs like Hard Road, I'm just not feeling like they're all in it together. You know, yeah. there's one person that's driving in, and I think it's probably Tony. I, I don't know, but Ozzy's just sort of there. He's he's coasting through. Yeah. Bass is pretty subdued. The whole the song as a whole is pretty subdued. So that's kind of where I, that's where my disconnect with this album comes from. I'm going to go on to Air Dance. You know, John and I talked about it when we did the, the Never Say Die analysis. It's just so different. And I'm not sure what the inspiration was for the lyrics. Yes. Definitely a different perspective for Geezer and his writing. Um, and it's interesting. And, and you can connect to it, Steve. And, and, and mm. you know, I can to, to a degree because it's a pretty simple concept. But it's a, it's a concept that's kind of foreign for Black Sabbath because Black Sabbath, I think, was up to this point was the friend of the misfit or the or the or the disenchanted person or the 
you know, the, the person who's just sort of like on the outskirts of society, you know, uh, and, and by that I mean that you can listen to, to the lyrics in the way that Ozzy sings and it, it isn't something that they don't sound like superheroes. They don't sound like people that are way above the average person. Their lyrics are more grounded, um, deals with emotions that I think, especially you know, somebody, a young person can deal with, you know, the feelings of alienation and, you know, basic uh, disassociation with society. When you get into to never say die, then it gets into this other aspect where and maybe it's maturity, where all of a sudden now, you know, the games changed and they start getting into different lyrical topics that, mm -hmm. It definitely takes it into a different, different area. You can definitely oh, hear them searching on this what? album, trying to find. It's sort of like you know we've we've referenced this sort of feeling of things falling apart. It's sort of like a marriage that's just going south. They're trying to do anything they can to sort of keep this together, but there's just this impending feeling of doom over the over the whole thing and maybe they're grasping at straws for some things and some things i think work better than others some things connect with some people some things connect with other people i do find it though an interesting album if you know john you mentioned this earlier about you know you hearing war pigs and paranoid all the time as much as i love paranoid and mm -hmm. you know those albums and i can still crank them up and enjoy it there is sure. something really fun about Never Say Die because they, they really didn't play many of these songs live. It's, no. it's almost like a forgotten Black Sabbath album, if you will. Technical Ecstasy has a little bit of that feel too. It's, oh, it's, yeah. it's kind of like their forgotten Black Sabbath albums. I, I don't know if we did this off camera or on camera. We made the reference to the first six out. You can only trust yourself in the first six <laughs> Black Sabbath album shirts. You know, we're going <laughs> to... Mm. We're gonna curse that shirt. Yeah, that's that's so lame. That's such a poser. <laughs> Every true Black Sabbath fan saw that shirt and went, "What? That's not uh, what's wrong." Yeah, but, but it makes it seem like these albums are sort of like hidden gems. And again, there are some flaws on it, but it's it's a fun yeah. album to kind of come to sometimes because it is so different because you you never hear these songs played live and everything. So. No, I don't know though. I. I think a lot of the songs maybe harken back to the times of earth and stuff like that. Cause there's a way more jazzy feeling on some of those songs. Oh, I yeah. could picture, I could picture them jamming those songs in, you know, that's what 69 or something like that. I, you I know, the echo of that, John, I agree. Totally, I'm totally. glad you said that because like some songs like air dance could almost sound like they could be from the late sixties. Totally, like, totally. Even even the way Junior's eye starts off, you know, you could totally hear that yeah. in, in a um, you know a late sixties kind of uh, jam or jazzy. something. Like, yeah, yeah, even "Never Say Die" has that old rock and roll vibe to it. A lot of those songs have a very sixties yeah. vibe to it, so it's not actually so. It, I think they might have moved so far forward and actually might have brought this back and, and um mm -hmm. to Naomi went more to his original influences on his stuff more than you know moving forward with what he was doing with black sabbath i, I don't know that's just the i mean i've always yeah. thought that when i've heard when i just song like junior's eyes i totally think that's a old school sabbath song it might not have the production as those other ones it's totally more refined production that's probably the the biggest problem on the album I mean, I'm, I'm used to it and i'm a I'm old death metal head so i'm used to crappy demo production so i could look past you know like the the production on the album not being my favorite but you know i i, I dig in and really listen to those riffs and, and those riffs i think you know are something that tony omi could have been just jamming out with you know, uh, Bill Ward and Geezer Butler in like, you know, when, when they're doing like, you know, their, um, you know, jam night, what was it, jam night and like uh, Hamburg or whatever they were, yeah. they were jamming yeah, yeah. and some of that stuff, you know, at least that's, that's my opinion. And I do, I do want to make it clear that I don't hate air dance. It's just that I <laughs> just think that that song is probably the one that is the most 
probably not fitting. I could see people listening to that and be like, that's just a little bit too much, uh, too far out of the, you know, the Black Sabbath pocket. But, you know, for me, I, yeah, I, I agree. I listen to it and I, I still enjoy it because I like the context of the whole album mm-hmm. of that, zo- that somber thing. And I, it flows, yeah, it flows through, I think. Yeah. And I do have to say, air, uh, Shockwaves, holy crap that song rules it just it, it's i love that song so much when i especially when it comes to that freaking solo part in that song it's just like you yeah. just like fuck yeah you know you're like fucking iomi is totally there and going for it and you know i just i just love that song i, I i'm so bummed out that they they barely even played that song on the the never say die tour i mean i wish they would have played that in that that live um VHS mm. tape they made yeah, back in the right. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have, I would have just shit, you know, to hear a song like that. I mean, well, at that, at that time I was still a novice when I f- first got that live, and I've, I've listened to that to the ends of the earth. But I mean, just that song is is definitely a Sabbath song that should be closer to a standard. But I mean, anyone that's a real Sabbath fan knows that there's a ridiculous amount of Sabbath songs that should be standards in their set that are, are like, just like not even considered. But I mean, Ozzy right. probably can't, I don't think he could sing the songs anymore. You know, which is well, kind of sad because like, you know, albums, of course, yes. yeah, I mean, you know, Sabotage or something. I mean, there's yeah. so many great songs on all those albums. It's, 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 it should be, it should be a crime for them not to play it live. You know, she get, it should get fined or something for not playing, yeah. you know. Ozzy's um, not pulling off some of those sab- <laughs> any of the sabotage songs anymore. We, as when they were still a band, we were going to see them every year, like Chris Allo, who's been on the show. It, and, you know, we'll talk about it. I was like, well, he, he just can't do it. Really I know, but it was, it was torturous, bad. though, to watch Sabbath. Yeah. I mean, I'm watching like pretty much my favorite band of all time. And mm-hmm. all they're doing is just playing the generics. It's just like, come on, you have, you have all this great material. That's, you know, it's like, throw us something, give us something, you know, something for the real Sabbath fans, not just the uh, Joe Schmoes. I mean, okay, okay you, could put, you could play your War Pigs and your Paranoid Iron Man, and, well, you know, all that generic stuff. It, it's good, they're, they're, they're good songs. Do they ever need to be played again? No, they never need to play played by anybody ever again. If you don't know the song <laughs> by heart, by now why you know it's ridiculous but you know i mean with all these great songs that they have throw throw like one one treat in there something you know even if that to play at a lower register or something it's torturous for my favorite band to see no no songs that are interesting go ahead okay when it came back in 96 and they did the reunion album of course you know the paranoid children of the grave war but um, Spiral Architect, I was surprised to see. Yeah, listing. You know, yeah, they, they did kind of dust. Did off a couple the- things when they first came back. I think didn't they do like Lord of This World or, yeah. or After Forever? No, I think it was After yeah, Forever. Yeah, they did After Forever for a little bit. I think they still did that. They still did that for a while village. though. Yeah, but they pretty much yeah. got stuck in this rut of but they the were, first three albums. Basically, they were doing those songs. They were doing a lot of Sleep in Village, all that stuff for uh, too many times already. Yeah, well, I mean, I, 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 by the time I see them on that thirteen tour, it was just like, come on, this is your last tour. You're not gonna pull out even a medley of like all the great riffs. Do give me something, you know? You know, it's what? sad. Yeah. Here, here's the thing, though. I saw them I, when I saw them on that 13 tour. I, I think they, of course, they played Paranoid as as the encore. And there was a kid in front of me. He looked like he was about 12 or 13 years old in the row in front of me. And he's getting into the whole concert. And when they came out and they started playing Paranoid, this kid just went ballistic, of air guitaring yeah. and everything. And he turns around and he looks at me and he goes. This is my favorite song. I was hoping that they would play this. <laughs> That's what I said. That's the, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> but I gotta admit, this kid's enthusiasm for it. I just saw this kid. For I this know. kid, he was like, "Man, coming to that show, Dad. I hope you know he couldn't have been more than thirteen years hope old. They play the Dad, yeah, I, I yeah. hope they play Paranoid." <laughs> well, I mean, that reminds me. I of think a te- they will, son. I think they will. A, ter- a terrible story. I mean, a ridiculous story was when I seen that heaven and hell reunion, the guy next to me in the seats, like, I hope they play Holy Diver. <laughs> oh, and I was like, I <laughs> definitely hope not. 
I mean, I, I've seen I seen Dio now. play Holy Diver, and that's great. But you know, yeah, and um, <laughs> and and actually, that reminds me when I seen Sabbath at the um, uh, one of the Oz Fest it was, and it was the I didn't see the show that uh, Rob Halford did yeah, vocals I for. One, yeah, I, I was at the night after in Pittsburgh, mm. and man, I was so bummed out that Ozzy was feeling better and played the show because oh, you are they, they, the thing. <laughs> they came out and they played the same set I've seen a million times. And I was just like, yeah, you know, at least if, at least if uh, Rob Halford was there, it would have been okay. Something a little bit different. Maybe they still played the same songs. And I, I seen the, I have the footage from the show in New Jersey at the yeah, PNC yeah. and, and, it, it was good of Rob Halford's singing the songs. It was okay. It wasn't great. It definitely was not was as good as Rob. It wasn't yeah. as good as Rob Halford at the uh, Costa Mesa show. That mm. was so, that was a killer, killer show, yeah. but it also worked because it was a more diverse uh, set. But anyway, that's just my little story on like, you know, ridiculous, um, Holy you know, Diver. yeah. yeah and Holy see. Diver. That was just, a, I was just like, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't have the heart to tell him like, that's in the dark. <laughs> could have been could have been worse he could have said i hope they play crazy train or something yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah and for me for to see black sabbath with dio on that heaven hell at first tour i it was such an emotional moment for me because i never thought in my life that i would ever see like the live evil type of a show in my you know i just never thought it would happen so it was so emotional for me and it was such a, yeah. an amazing experience to see that because I got to see rarity songs that they don't normally play, you know, deal. Mm -hmm. I never seen deal play or, you know, and whatnot. And it was just um, phenomenal. Yeah. And just, just to think like, it's sad because there's so many people there just have no fucking clue to what the hell they're even talking about. You know, they probably don't even know half the songs. They don't even know Dehumanizer even exists. I know I'm going off on a ramp, but man, that pisses me off. off. I, mean, like I'm, I mean, this is like my favorite band ever. And like, you know, you want them to play like the most generic fucking song of, the, of their career. That's great. I mean, I understand people want to see those songs. They're, they're popular, but, you know, yeah. be, I want to be psyched to see, you know, the one song that, you know, you know some stupid rare song i don't care if the song is my my least favorite song just to see something different is awesome for me you know yeah. that's my rant i'm sorry yeah, the, one, the, one, the one thing i have to say about never say die is we were when we saw the last last tours after 13 of course me and darren are both wearing the shirt they they really marketed their imagery would never say die even though they yes. didn't play anything from it they you know all were stated they didn't like the album <laughs> wouldn't you think they would have sold more cut more if they would have put like sabbath bloody sabbath on the tour shirt but they kept going back to never say die and uh well and if you remember in the first iron is it the yeah. first iron man movie or the avengers movie tony stark is oh, yeah, wearing totally the I mean, you know the never with the never say die image on it, so it had sort of a resurgence in the. And they were selling that shirt at like Target and you know all yeah. the big box stores. And I remember like meeting people that weren't even in the metal that would have it on because you know uh, Morton Downey or you know, whatever you know that yeah. played Iron Man was wearing the shirt. So is that yeah. why they did it? You think, or was it because they knew it was the end and it was the end the first time when this came out? Maybe I that. think when. I think when they did the 96 reunion, there wasn't a studio album to support. So they went by default back to the last studio album. And they, st and they, still, and they still kept running with it all the way to the very, very end. You know? Yeah. Yep. But, you know, we were talking about, John, you mentioned that Hammersmith video. And, and we're talking about the album Never Say Die and, and how it sounds, it, it's the sound of a band dying. And it, it, it's kind of, you know, it's sad because you, you can hear the band falling apart. But then it, you have to remind yourself that when you see that concert video, I mean, they sound incredible. Oh, that I concert video, were, not, yeah. I mean, the, the whole concert is like, wow, they're into it. I mean, this is like, there's a lot of energy in this performance. Now, you know, the song, you know, the set, you, you got all your, you know, your, your typical songs. Yeah. And, we wish there were some hidden gems or maybe more often never say die because after all that's the album they're supporting yeah i mean you 
the way that they jam on stage, the way that they, they interact, I mean, it seems like, yeah, these guys are probably ready for another 10 years. Yeah. You know, there's, there's like a difference. There's, there's the way the band sounds on the album, and then there's the way that they come across live on that tour. It's like two diametrically opposed well, situations to me, I think. I think there was two, two things I wanted to bring up. One was, first of all, that video, I remember um, dubbing a copy from my local video store of, and I, I watched that thing, man, I, I might've I might watched that thing almost at least three, four times a week. And it was so wow. crazy. Cause my guitar teacher's like, you watch that. Like I watch song remain the same. And I'm like, like Sabbath is, is this is it for me. And you know? so it's like, everything I do is going to spawn from this. I remember I watched that video so many times. That's for me, one of the most awesome, um, you know, heavy videos uh, of Black Sabbath. I mean, it just, it brings back great memories for me. And um, I, yeah, I think it's a, a great live show. Yeah, I mean, I didn't mind so much that they didn't play, um, you know, some of the deeper cuts. Well, yeah, I would have preferred a little bit, but I was still at that stage of being a Black Sabbath fan where I don't mind, you know, okay, maybe Paranoid, I, I, I lost that one a while ago, but most of the other songs I still didn't mind listening to a lot. It was still at heavy rotation, songs like Children of the Grave. I mean, I was, you know, like, I don't know, 13 or something, you know, at that time. But, but, um, and I do want, what I, wa I wanted to bring up too was um, with the recording and writing of, of um, Never Say Die. You know, at, you know, after reading Tony Naomi's book, I mean, the pressure was pretty intense on him to come up with ev everything music wise. It seemed like it's like everybody else was checked out, you know, totally wasted. And he was probably totally wasted, too. But he still mm -hmm. had to produce if he wanted to, you know, keep his coke habit going, you know. So mm -hmm. it was like, you know, th that pressure to perform at such a high level for, for such a, uh, you know, a long string of time. And it, they did a lot of albums in a short period of time, album tour, album tour. And, um, you know, so, you know, I think, you know, I, I could see where where it was a really difficult album for um, Tony, Tony Omi. And he probably has a lot of negative feelings about that time in the band because, I mean, especially, you know, I mean, you guys know the history well. It was kind of like after Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, that's when things really started to like be put on his shoulders, I guess, to kind of produce just because it's like you came up with all these, this great first, what, four albums. And now you're just expected each time to like, you know, come out with this monster of a song each time. And it's like every songwriter knows that, you know, it's like not every song is going to be that same monsters last one. And you don't always want it to be that you want it to be something different. You want to express yourself in a different way, or you just, you know, you, you don't want to always go in that same box that, you know, you might've gotten yourself into say on your first four albums, you know, and you could tell, you know, it's the first four and then, you know, what the last, is it four or five, I guess? Um, you could tell that, you know, they started to change a little bit and throw in more stuff. But by the time, um, you know, Never Say Die, I think, you know, he was still, I, I, I think his riffs are still good on Never Say Die. I just think mm -hmm. that, you know, he was definitely running close to empty and the pressure you know, you, you, you can hear that pressure to some extent, but there's other moments when, you know, you hear, like I said, uh, the soul, some of the solos on the albums. Is so, yeah. so great too. And like live, it was a different story because live it's like, you know, okay, you just could go out there and you play most of your popular songs and to keep that, you know, that energy going. It's a, it's a different monster to, to write music than it is to go out and just perform, you know, songs and stuff it's just a totally different uh way as uh, at least for me as uh, as a musician songwriter i look at the writing process and the um the, the live performance process totally different thing and they were they were pretty good um you know live i think around that time i mean all the bootlegs i've heard from that time i, I thought those shows were good i, I know people say a lot about van halen kicking their ass and i, I mean it's a, just it was like two different monsters you know i mean oh yeah I mean, uh, Van Halen was a band that was just on the attack and like oh. doing a new 
new thing, a new, um, you know, a new kind of aggressive party kind of thing. And Sabbath was, you know, I mean, a band like Van Halen's always going to have a different effect on you than Sabbath's going to have on you. It's not like, you're just, it's two different totally feelings. It's like, I don't know, um, you know, mixing a, a death metal band and a power metal band together. They're just two mm -hmm. different vibes. You, you, you know, yeah. you could say, well, if I like Van Halen more uh, or that style of music, yeah, I'm going to pick Van Halen as the band that kicked ass that night. But, you know, if you like, you know, I mean, you know, after hearing the versions of, you know, songs like Black Sabbath and Children of the Grave um, from that tour, you know, for me, I, I would, I, I might be more into Sabbath than I was. I mean, I might be impressed by, um, you know, Van Halen, uh, you know, the guitar playing the band was great, but I still, you know, hearing the, hearing, um, you know, the power in, in Sabbath live, I just can't see, I can't see it being, um, you know, being, being like, oh, this sucks, you know? I mean, yeah. it, I mean, I, I went to that, that Sabbath show even in um, Madison Square Garden where it had Glenn Hughes where barely he barely sang anything. And I was just happy just to hear Tony Naomi play. I didn't give a fuck. It was like, was for me, it was still like, the metal yeah, it was still Metalands. like the most amazing thing ever, you know? I mean, just to hear those, those riffs and that stuff was enough for me as a... Um, what a 15 year old kid, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was a bummer that what well, I think uh, was it Jeff Nichols was singing some of the stuff. I don't know what the fuck was going. I can't remember. I just remember <laughs> it was a total fucking mess. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'm getting off track again. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, but um, to respond yeah. to what you're saying, like for me, I saw him on the forbidden tour, horrible <laughs> album, but it was a great concert because they, they couldn't sell out the TLA in Philadelphia. And we just walked right down in front and I was about, <laughs> 10 feet away from Tony Iommi looking at that, that, oh, that yes. SG. And I'm like, man, I, this is incredible. You know, I'm yeah. looking right at Tony Iommi. So yeah, the God. <laughs> in spite of the tour, in spite of the album they were touring for not being that great. Hey, you know, I mean, that's the upshot, I guess. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think we've, uh, we've had able to uh, talk a lot here about uh, Never Say Die. Anybody got any uh, thing they want to say here before we go? Uh, uh, speak now or forever hold your peace on Never Say Die. <laughs> I, got my, I got my Black Sabbath, the end pillow here. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. I, 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 I got I mean, I, now, so yeah, I'm singing, <laughs> I'm singing air dance for you. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, when it comes to sabbath and um i mean a lot of love bands i really like i am kind of an elitist prick you know because <laughs> a band like sabbath is super important to me and i you know i look at it like you know you just you can't like sabbath that much if you don't like never say die. And I know it's a terrible uh -huh. thing. So I know people that are totally going to disagree with me and just say they don't get it. Or they might, you might think they're the biggest black South fan, but I mean, never say die is, is essential. It just, it just puts the whole thing in proper context. It wasn't like Sabbath went from a, a killer album. And then Ozzy said, Oh, I want to leave when things are good. No, he mm. did what most people do is when things are down, jump ship, you know, and do your own thing. And it, okay, it worked for him, but still it, it wasn't necessarily the, um, you know, probably you know, what I would consider the honorable thing to do, but I'm a diehard, you know, I, I stick it out to the well, end because, you know, I yeah. believe in the cause and maybe he didn't, I mean, I, who knows, but for who me, knows? it was like, it was like that, that ending, it just, it's just perfect because when if you listen to it all it's like it just it closes that chapter it closes that ozzy chapter ozzy goes on to you know definitely bigger and better things that never say die and, and maybe or sabbath Blizzard, even. Yeah. Yeah. but then um you know uh black sabbath goes on to bigger and better things too it was like it was it was how things had to go for both of them to really shine um you know shine in, in the future properly you know i mean i know sabbath had you know problems afterwards um you know yeah. everyone knows in the mid 80s it was kind of a, a bummer of uh situations that happened with sabbath but still uh i 
I mean, I don't know how you could listen to, uh, you know, Shockwaves, Johnny Blade, Junior's Eyes, you know, those songs at the minimum and not like those songs. I mean, I, some of the other ones I could kind of understand, okay, people don't like, but I mean, Swing of the Chain, I mean, those riffs are fucking killer. The, um, you know, I don't know. Over to you. I, I like the album. I think it's a great album. I just, <laughs> I, I watch, I'm looking at it. It's a great album. And I'll, I'll, I listen to Never Say Die now more than I listen to the first, definitely the first four Black Sabbath. I listen to Never Say Die more. I probably listen wow. to Sabotage, Technical Ecstasy, Never Say Die, um, maybe Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. Those are, you know, for the Ozzy oh, eras, those are the ones yeah. I, I probably listen to the most out, out of those ones, just because, you know, there's something a little more interesting than the, f- the first couple. I mean, the first couple the are great albums. Like, heard too much, yeah. Yeah, you heard them too much. There's no, you know, I mean, I love, like, I love the warning, you know, it's great. I mean, that whole, that oh, whole, man, I mean, the first album by Sabbath is, is amazing, but it's just like, man, I listened to that a quadrillion times i mean between what when i first got into it probably in i don't know 80 i probably got into sabbath around 82 83 i don't remember exactly so basically like 83 until like you know 2000 or something i, I listened to those albums to such a ridiculous amount that it's just there's no interest and when you hear this other stuff you know that doesn't get as much um attention Mm. It's, it's just like to me it's just so great i mean um what was it i'm, I'm just i'm just thankful that ozzy did the album in the end and we didn't get dave walker no offense to dave because i've heard it heard that <laughs> stuff and i'm like wow and it does, it does, i don't think we would have been sitting here praising the album as much if dave did the album for some reason That's well, my point of view. i did have one question too and i don't know if you guys know because you guys obviously are, are really in the weeds with with sabbath is there did Dave Walker do any other songs? Like how, how he, I think he did Junior's Eyes and he, there was a live, there was a live thing, him doing two songs, but one of them might've been a sat, uh, right? An uh, uh, Aussie song, was it? Yeah, the only, the only thing that's ever come out was his version of Junior's Eyes. There's, the story goes that yeah, they Junior. worked on a couple, they were working on a couple songs yeah. But the only thing to really ever surface is uh, Junior's eyes. And when they say working on it, I don't know what that means. I don't know if it means that they're complete or they were just bouncing around some riffs and some ideas. You get the impression that the album, that most of those riffs were written and that's what they were starting to work on. And then when Ozzy came back, you know, he didn't want to sing on any of that. But to my knowledge, the only thing that's ever surfaced is uh, Junior's eyes because they did it like a, German TV shows like yes. a top of the pops type yeah. of thing with with yeah. Dave Walker. So I, I, I'm yeah. guessing that the music was pretty much probably the same as what ended up on the album. The stuff that they were working on with with Dave Walker, but rather than you know let Ozzy hear Dave Walker's melodies and say hey sing it like he did, I mean that was that was off the table. But I, I, oh, I think yeah. that the music was probably the same. Well, the I think. Part. I mean, I think, I mean, especially if the songs were written for Dave Walker to sing and then to try to convert it to Ozzy had to have been a struggle because I mean, they're, I mean, if you listen to Dave Walker, I mean, his, his vocals are like totally, totally different style. I mean, yeah. it's totally like, he's like a total bluesy. Sound mm-hmm. like Southern rock almost like a mic. Yeah. It meets Black Sabbath more. That's mm-hmm. what I came from that song. And, and you could understand too, if, and if if you put that into consideration, then all you know, probably Dave Walker. Maybe he wrote the lyrics to some of those songs that he did. So Geezer Butler's like, oh, cool, I get to chill out for a little bit. Ah, oh, motherfucker, now I got to write the lyrics to the album, <laughs> yeah. you know. So you get you getting him like, ah, oh, fuck, okay, you know. So you get you're putting everybody in a shitty a shitty situation, yeah. you know. Actually, going back to Ozzy and the fact that Ozzy was being kind of stubborn about it, not wanting to do the you know the stuff, you know, not wanting to do the songs that uh, Dave Walker d- done and that stuff. I mean, that's just petty petty crap anyway. And pull and pull a Bruce Dickinson and just do you know the other vocalist stuff and just kick ass at it, you know. Yeah, yeah. For the fans. 
well, I mean, at that point, it weren't those songs weren't presented to the fans. But yeah, I mean, I think that maybe Ozzy actually hindered the album. Maybe it, it might have actually turned out pretty good if Dave Walker had had okay. recorded the album. You know, and it was done it recorded properly in a studio, and and maybe the songs might have developed a little bit differently, and we might have liked it. You know, I mean, we, we had Glenn Hughes sing on an album. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's sure. hard. It's hard to say because it was just it was so different. The, the tone is so different so of course when you have somebody else come in to do vocals that sings totally different i mean i mean really no one really sings like ozzy at least um i mean there, there are people that copy him but he's really pretty original as a vocalist style yeah and to have him to have these songs just say like okay let's just change it over to you know ozzy sabbath songs i mean in in a way having dave walker do those songs was probably a smart move by uh, the Black Sabbath guys because just like getting Dio, you didn't want somebody that was just going to play, you know, beat Ozzy part two because that would have just been probably a terrible move. It usually doesn't work out that way. You have to get somebody that is good at, but still is distinctively themselves. There's just no, there's no escaping the fact that the voc whatever vocalist is on the music is going to change the music um, sound regardless of um you know the, the rest of the whole rest of the band could be the same you change that vocalist yeah. like you know it, it changes Stays. everything yeah for sure but steve you got any final thoughts on never say die i think we've said it all i <laughs> never say die i guess and uh, <laughs> thank you for having me on your uh, channel and it's always fun to have you on the rock fantasy files and yeah right. thanks thanks i appreciate you guys coming on darren you got any last things you want to say on never say die yeah we talked about it before and it's one it's one point i want to make again um i don't want to go on record as saying i i i don't like never say die i i love black sabbath i love the the ozzy era of black sabbath and, and i and i do like never say die when we start talking about it from a critical standpoint then i you know, I kind of dice it up a little bit, but the one thing I mentioned before, and I want to underscore this this time again, is I would rather have a ne an album like Never Say Die, where there's some experimentation going on, where there's some sincere things that are out of the box, that are kind of foreign to what they've done before, as opposed to an album like 13, where somebody apparently said, hey, I want you guys to write songs like uh, the first three albums. You know? mm -hmm. And then we had representations of, of songs on 13 that were cookie cutter versions of songs from the first three albums. You know, at, at least Never Say Die sounded different from anything they had done before. Yeah. And it was a natural progression. It was, it was kind of sad in that you can kind of hear the band falling apart, but I'll take that. I'll, I'll take that over something that sounds forced and contrived. Well, you yeah. Know. I mean, when well, I listen well, to an well, album, well, you want to be you know, honest. Yeah. And sure. it is it's an honest album. I mean, you, it's like you start out saying, you can hear the band falling apart. And, and, and that is cool for a fan uh, well, like myself. I mean, in, in, in a lot of ways, it's kind of bittersweet, but on the other hand, it's letting you in. It's giving you that, that window into the music and and the tone and the I, background and and that's pretty cool i want to make a comparison one thing before i go and i'm sorry i don't mean to keep going on with this but i i would rather have black sabbath do it the way they did and just you know it, it's like never say die to me sounds very honest like you were saying you compare that to what kiss did when they started to fall you know they just instead of just going in and doing the album they needed to do be honest with it they kind of did albums that were what they felt were going to be popular or what they felt someone was like whispering in their ear what it should be like to some extent never say die doesn't sound like that never say die sounds like an album that okay you know this is us this is where we're at right now they're going to die on their sword you know yeah. i think I mean, it wasn't until, you know, Kiss did Creatures of the Night where they really start, to me, they really started coming, okay, let's just get a little more on track of what, like, what we're, we are as a band, you know? For a while, they were just, they were just, like, doing this tripe stuff. I mean, there's some okay songs and stuff, not saying that, but it's just, to me, I'd rather just have them just, just 
play it, put the fucking songs on the album that you want, you mm-hmm. know, and just, yeah. and if no one likes it, say, you know what, no one likes it, but we like it. We think it's good album or this is where we were at then. And this is, you know, what it is. Cause you can always look back on your, any material you do and you could always criticize it for whatever reason. Even I know Sabbath criticizes this album, but every band criticizes an album that doesn't do well for him, you know, but if, sure. you know, if one of the songs off this album would have taken off for him, you know, all of a sudden this would have been the most experimental, amazing album ever, you know? <laughs> I, I made that point when we did our technical ecstasy podcast and I'll just sum it up really quickly. Okay. And you mentioned Kiss. I said, if on technical ecstasy, it's all right, was a big number one hit for them. The same way Beth was a number one hit for Kiss. Yeah, It would have shaped a totally different tone for technical ecstasy. (laughs) Thus, Never Say Die would have sold better. And just like Kiss, they complained that Bob Ezrin was a taskmaster and destroyer. Oh, it was a real difficult album to make but it was worth it because Destroyer sold really well, thanks to yeah. Beth and everything else. It didn't work out that way for Black Sabbath. But uh, like you mentioned earlier, John, it's, it's part of the band's history. And without Never Say Die, you don't get a heaven and hell. Without Never Say Die, you don't get a blizzard of Oz. So it's all part of yeah. uh, the Black Sabbath history. So. You can only trust yourself in the first three Kiss records. Only <laughs> <laughs> three, And, <laughs> and um, what, what's it though? I mean, the thing with Technical Ecstasy is Technical Ecstasy is just is a fucking great album too. I mean, that that one is no. It. There's no excuse why that one didn't do better than what it did. I mean, that is some heavy. I mean, that's definitely a heavier album. Than Never say die. Never say die. I could at least. I could understand why people don't like it, but I got technical ecstasy. No, dude, those songs are, I, I mean, I think that yeah. sounds, fuck. Well, we'll have to save that for our in defense of technical yeah, ecstasy yeah, episode. Yeah. That'll be our yeah. next one. All you guys yeah. in defense of technical ecstasy. So, all right. Well, I would like to oh. thank uh, John and Steve and Darren for coming here at the lair for helping me defend and never say die. Uh, let us know in the comments down below what, yep. Let us know in the comments down below what you guys uh, think we of. We have matching shirts on me and there, Darren yeah. has a matching shirt. So. <laughs> Just be proud. We all own the record. <laughs> yeah. all right, hold, hold, hold on. There's the back on. All right. Well, thanks again, guys. Uh, everybody out there, uh, leave some comments down below. Let us know what you guys think of Never Say Die. And until we see you again, make sure you stay heavy, stay metal. Never say, and never say die.